Welcome back to Tennis Talk, my name's Cam Williams and we have some big changes to the ATP and WTA finals race with some big names dropping down the rankings and out of the top 10, especially some of the Grand Slam champions that we're used to seeing over the last couple of years being in the top 10. They've actually fallen out of the top 10. Let's start with the champions of last week because we had four tournaments on last week. So let's go check out who won last week. So starting with the Astana Open on the WTA, the WTA 250 event and Van Udvank beat Putin Seva in a very close three-set match, 1-6, 6-4, 6-3, to get her fifth title in the singles in her career. She also got a boost in the rankings for that as well. And Muguruza, she won the Chicago Classic, which was a WTA 500 event, a lot of points up for grabs, beating Jabor in the final, 3-6, 6-3, 6 love. And both of those players actually got some boost in the rankings as well. Muguruza playing for the WTA final, so a good boost there to her ranking as well. Heading over to the men's events now, and we had two events, two ATP 250 events, starting with the Sofia Open. Yannick Sinner defending his title. He won this title at the end of last year. Going back to back, beating Monfils in the final, 6-3, 6-4. And Casper Ruud beating Cam Norrie in the final of the San Diego Open to win his first hard court title on the ATP, and he absolutely destroyed Nori, 6-love, six 6-2, six to lift the trophy. And both of the winners this week are playing for ATP final spots, so they'll be very happy that they got some extra points this week. Let's jump over to the WTA rankings this week, and not much has changed at the top of the rankings, with Ash Barty staying at number one, Sabalenka at number two, Pliskova at number three, Sviantec four, Krejcikova stays at five. But we have some big changes to the bottom half of the top 10, with Svetolina going down one spot, to number seven, and Naomi Osaka dropping out of the top 10 for the first time since 2018. So it's been three years since we've seen Naomi Osaka out of the top 10. She drops down five spots, and Muguruza, after winning the Chicago Open, she goes up three spots to number six in the world. So some big changes to that top 10 there. Kennan stays at number eight, and Sakari, she gets rewarded thanks to Osaka dropping out of the top 10, going up to a career-high ranking of number nine, and Bencic, she returns to the top 10, going up two spots to number 10 in the world. So big changes to the top Top 10 of the women, especially seeing Osaka out of the top 10, and we don't even know if we're going to see Osaka for the rest of the year. So her ranking might drop even further over the next couple of months. Heading over to the race to Mexico now, of course, the WTA Finals race starting to take shape now. We have four players qualified. Barty, she still doesn't know if she's going to play the event, so we're going to keep an eye on her. She's not playing Indian Wells this week, but Barty is already qualified at number one. Sabalenka's at number two, and she is not playing Indian Wells either because she tested positive for COVID. Krejcikova, she's at number three. Pliskova at four. Zachary at five, just outside of qualification. But Muguruza, she's gone up two spots to number six after that really good week last week in Chicago, getting 500 extra points for that win, pushing down Sviontek and Osaka to number seven and eight. Jabor, despite making the final of Chicago, she stays at number nine, just outside of that top eight. And Pavlachenkova, she drops out of the top 10 again, making way for Mertens, who returns to the top 10 in the race to the WTA Finals, wrapping up the top 10. Having a look at the players that have gone up in the rankings this week, and it's the players that did well last week. Surprise, surprise. Jabor, she's at a career-high ranking number 14 in the world, two spots higher than last week after making the final of Chicago. And Van Udvank, after dropping down the rankings last week after losing a lot of points, she's gained a lot of points this week, going up 35 spots to number 54 in the world. Players that have dropped down in the rankings, and it's Grand Slam champions, former Grand Slam champions that have dropped down. Sloane Stevens, she's gone down 10 spots Spots to number 73 in the world. Just can't find any consistency at the moment. And Venus Williams, she's dropped down 24 spots to 176 in the world. So she is relying on wild cards to make every event. And she'll get them. You know, she is a champion, but she's relying heavily on getting wild cards, especially to the Australian Open, probably most of the tournaments next year. Having a look at the ATP rankings now, and no changes to the top 10 as there were last week. There was no changes last week. We have Djokovic at number one, Medvedev at number two, since he passed at three, Zverev at four, Rublev stays at five, Rafa stays at six for now, with Berrettini at number seven, Dominic Team he stays at number eight, but that will change over the next couple of weeks. Roger Federer stays at nine, again, that will change over the next few weeks. And Kasper Rudd, after winning his first hardcore title in San Diego, he stays at number 10, but he'll go up in the rankings, possibly after Indian Wells, no matter what happens with the results. Having a look at the A to B finals race now, and things are starting to take shape. We already have four players qualified already. We have Djokovic at number one, with Medvedev at number two, Sidzi Pass at three, Zverev at four. All of those are qualified. Rublev is at five, very close to qualification. If he has a good week at Indian Wells, he might be able to get there. Same with Berrettini, not far behind. But Hubi Hercatch, 
He drops down one spot after Casper Ruud winning in San Diego takes him up to number seven. So those guys switch spots. And Sinner, he goes up one spot after winning his title in Bulgaria. So he's gone up another spot to number nine, pushing FAA down to number 10 to round out the top 10 for this week. Players that have gone up in the ATB rankings this week, we have Nori. He's up at a career high ranking and number 26 in the world. He's gone up two spots despite losing pretty badly in the final of San Diego. Still got a lot of points for that. And Giron, after having a really good week at the Sofia Open, he's gone up 11 spots to a career high ranking of number 56 in the world. So a couple of players getting rewarded after having good weeks last week. And then the players that have gone down in the rankings, we have Pospisil. He's gone down 16 spots to number 84 in the world. And John Millman, he's gone down 35 spots to number 90 in the world after losing all the points that he made at the Japan Open a couple of years ago. Of course, all the points from the Asian swing starting to fall off the rankings now despite that whole section of events being cancelled this year. All the points are going to be lost from both the men and the women's tournaments. So, Millman, very unlucky to drop down so low. So there it is, the rankings for this week. No massive changes to the top of the tree of the rankings. Djokovic, Barty, they're staying at number one in the world. But there are some changes in the ATP and WTA finals race. And also, they're going to be qualifying pretty soon. Some of those players in the middle of the rankings. We've got four spots left for both the men and the women to play the finals. Let me know down in the comments below, who do you think is going to qualify for the ATP and WTA finals? Because, like I said... Four spots up for grabs in both the men and the women, and it's very, very close, especially for those last couple of spots. Between 7 and 15 in the world rankings, they're very, very close on those ATP and WTA races, so anyone could really get in. So the seedings are locked in for Indian Wells this week, but some big changes have happened to the rankings very late on in the season.